Hello, in this presentation I will talk about the main parts of the Marie Sklodowska Curie Actions Postdoctoral Fellowship Proposal. I'm Mila Kalpashnikova, a current Marie Curie Individual Fellow at the University of Oxford. Before you apply, you need to make sure that you meet all the eligibility cr criteria. For example, you must meet the requirement that there are no more than eight years since you finish your PhD. You cannot be a current PhD student, you need to have successfully defended your dissertation. You also cannot apply with an institution which you have been staying at for more than 12 months uh, in the last three years. Some additional restrictions on reapplications will be enforced in 2022, so make sure that you check them all out. Writing grants is exhausting and it takes a lot of time. A 2015 research paper by von Hippel and von Hippel shows that on average, principal investigators spend about 115 hours on a single grant application. So it is better to share your pain with someone who is also going through the same experience. That is, it is better to spend those 115 hours with someone who also preparing their own application for MSCA. To avoid competing with each other, try to find someone who is in different discipline. For example, if you are in social sciences, find someone who is applying in STEM. It also helps to make your writing clearer to people from other disciplines when you read and comment on each other's drafts because you are from different disciplines. Also, if any of your well-meaning friends recommends you to apply, even if you didn't put enough work into your application, think again. So if someone tells you that there is no downside to applying and to just get your application in, it is uh, actually a pretty bad advice for the MSCA postdoctoral application. This is because if your application receives a score less than 70%, you will be barred from applying in the next round. Apply only when you're certain your application is good enough. The applications for the Marie Curie fellowships are usually very well structured. I think grad schools don't teach it enough that grant writing, like any type of academic writing, is very formulaic. Just like with journal papers, Every part has its predefined place and you just need to know the conventions for each grant. Every single page in the applications form actually already has an expectation about what it has to contain. With few exceptions, most grant applications have an established structure. Grant funders don't make proposal formulaic to downplay the creativity of researchers, but they need to evaluate the grants against common metrics. If you have a chance, uh, just take a look at the successful applications and you will see how similar they are in their structure. Not in their contents, but just in their structure. It's difficult to find a funded example of a proposal online because it's a lot of work for people to share it with everyone for free. However, I found a blog by Shannon Chance which details a proposal with a good score in the description below. Make sure that you check it out. MSCA proposals are required to have three main parts, excellence, impact and implementation. Each part has its own expectations of what it needs to contain. These expectations are laid out in the work program and in the proposal guidelines or technical description. These are two documents that you need to read in detail. I will also link those documents in the description below. The part that weighs the most in the decision to fund a proposal is the excellence part. If any two proposals have equal scores in total, the one with the highest score in excellence will be given priority. So remember to put most of your efforts into the excellence part. The excellence part is the part that will take the most space in the 10 page limit. In my own application, it took five and a half pages. This part also usually contains figures. 
You might have heard this before from other applicants as well, but try to add one or two figures in this part. One describing the project overall and another some particulars of your research agenda. Remember that these figures will count into the page limit, so make them as informative as possible. Among successful applications, I saw two different ways that applicants choose to write their proposals. One way is to leave a lot of white space and write in a very concise manner. And the second way is to fill as much space as you can, but still make sure that there is enough white space and a lot of paragraphs. Choose the style that is close to your own writing style. If your writing tends to be wordy, try the second style. Yet always follow the rules about margins and font size. The main thing when writing the proposal, and particularly the excellence part, is hitting the keywords and making sure that you provided all the information that was requested in the proposal guidelines. So what do I mean by keywords? Let me give you an example. If you read the proposal guidelines, part B1, you will find this explanation for what section 1.1 of the excellence part needs to contain. Here they highlight the following points. At a minimum, address the following aspects. First, describe the quality and pertinence of the research and innovation objectives. Are the objectives measurable and verifiable? Are they re realistically achievable? And second, Describe how your project goes beyond the state of the art and the extent to which the proposal work is ambitious. In this part, I identified at least six keywords and phrases that need to be mentioned in the proposal. First of all, your proposal needs to mention research and innovation objectives. Thus, when mentioning an objective, it would make sense to highlight its research relevance and innovative aspects. Next, there are three adjectives mentioned in the guidelines in connection with the proposal's objectives. Measurable, verifiable, and achievable. Thus, the text needs to contain the information how each of the objectives will be measured and verified. Also, overall, there needs to be some type of an assertion that the objectives are achievable within the time frame. The projects need to be ambitious, but yet feasible to undertake within two years. Although it is very common to search for synonyms when we try to use the wording of the proposal guidelines, it is probably a better idea to repeat the keywords in the proposal as they are. It makes uh, the work of evaluators easier in finding and checking off the parts which they need to score. So, for instance, your proposal might need to contain the direct references like the project will go beyond the state of the art in ABC or the project is ambitious in ABC. Some of the main keywords might need to be highlighted. You can use bold, italic or underlined words to indicate those main key phrases. In this specific part, the keywords that absolutely need to be highlighted are objectives and beyond the state of the art. Try to follow the same formula in writing other parts of your first draft of the MSCA proposal. The impact part I personally find to be the most difficult part of the proposal. The difficulty comes with describing and planning the impact activities because they need to reach beyond academic audiences. And we as academics rarely think about the impacts outside of academia. So make sure that you have a detailed impact plan for each type of academic and non-academic stakeholders. Think social networks engagement, contacting news outlets, posting blogs, inviting focus groups, preparing reports, etc., etc. You need to add as much as detail as you can. 
Many universities that host MSCA fellows have dedicated research support teams, which can help you with writing the impact and implementation parts. It is vitally important that you ask them for help in preparing your application. Similar with the excellence part, make sure to cover all the points raised in the proposal guidelines. In the implementation part, there are three things that you need to pay attention to. You must include a gun chart for your proposal. It can take up to one page of the proposal. You need to understand common project management terms such as work packages, deliverables, or milestones. Make it easy to read and follow. There's a pretty cool R package called uh, Gantrify, which helps you make beautiful GAN charts in R. I link the GitHub repo in the description box. Another thing is the risk management plan. It can often be a table listing potential risks, the type, whether it's a research or administrative risk, and a short description of an action how to mitigate the risk. The final section is devoted to describing the quality of the host institution. This paragraph is usually written with the help of the host institutions themselves. So again, make sure that you connect to the research services team in your host institution. So this was the overview of the three main parts of the Maurice Kladowska Curie Actions uh, Postdoctoral Fellowship proposal. Good luck with your applications.